Hi everyone, I'm Ranch, the Bearded Plumber. Thanks for joining me today in today's video. Um, in this video, I will be showcasing a couple of jobs that I carried out this week. So job number one basically was at my neighbors. They came over and they said they've got no heat, no hot water. The boiler is actually under contract with one of the energy providers or you know, service providers here in the Netherlands. But however, their service is quite slow. They would have told the customer that they'll be there in two to three days diagnose the issue then come back again with the part um so therefore my neighbor was like look ranch can you just come and sort it out because you'll sort it out that you straight away so in this video and i will show you how i diagnosed exactly which part was faulty then the other bigger job in this video is a heating system that i've been maintaining for the last couple of years with a previous customer and now that the house is sold on the new customer asked me to come in do a service and he mentioned that his hot water wasn't as hot as he hoped or expected and that's because there was obviously installation error which I will showcase in the video as well of how I proved what the issue was and what I did to resolve it and also the radiators um, two of the radiators in the property were plumbed up incorrectly as in the flow and returns were reversed and again I show how I proved to the customer what work needed to be done and how I did it and then what the end result was and also I show how to use and set up your Testo 115i uh, thermometers, you know the clamp meters that you can get. I recently purchased them and I think they're fantastic. The reason why I really enjoy using them now, I use them almost on every job where I must, is just that it helps with your fault finding and diagnostics skills and also because it is digital and you can show it on your mobile phone you can show it to the customer and the customer can see also what you are trying to explain to them it just makes fault finding and explaining the situation easier so yeah that's what I did in this video so these are the main jobs that I'll be showcasing in this video and yeah let's get on with it Hey everyone, uh, going into a job right now and on this job basically it's a Bosch boiler and it's giving ignition error 6A code. I will basically show you how I diagnose the issue, I already know what the issue is. Um, basically it's at my neighbour's house and yesterday was Sunday, um, he came over and he said I've got no heat, no hot water. So I went in and I carried out my test to confirm what my suspicion was i already said it was the ignition electrode well in this boiler it's actually a glow plug and uh, yeah so i've got the new part here that i went and picked it up from my merchants and uh, yeah let's go inside and i'll show you how i diagnosed it to know it was this all right guys so here i am here's the job um as you can see it's a nefit bosch boiler smart line um I've already switched it off, but okay, well, let's turn it back on. And let's just run through the process of what it does. So obviously 21 is the temperature of the flow right now. It's on preheat mode. And then obviously the heating one comes on as well. And obviously these are the guys that, as you know, do the maintenance on this one. But the customers asked me to come and repair the boiler just because I'm quicker. Um, these guys will probably take a while to come out to them and uh, yeah so apparently their service is probably due anyway uh, on the 12th of this year so yeah let's just wait right now it's going to try to fire up okay here it goes so pumps on fans on should be firing up right now and there you go, 6A. So 6A basically means no ignition. So it's all gas related, ignition related. So yeah, let's get the cover off and show you what to do next, or what I did next. So cover's off, and I yesterday took out the condensed bottle. I already checked it to make sure that was all clear. That's completely clear. I then put my manometer, uh, you know, my digital Testo 510 on the inlet pressure and it did drop when the boiler tried to fire up so therefore that was all good gas valve was opening up and now this one here is a glow, glow plug uh, where is it? here it is 
So I went and picked this up this morning. In my bearded hot rod, I keep this in stock normally, but the different, uh, slightly different version. This one, as you can see, the rubber is actually attached to the glow plug to make sure it's a gas tight seal. And the one that I carry is slightly different and it wouldn't create a gas tight seal. And this is a glow plug. It's not an ignition electrode. So this filament in the middle, as you can see, it glows bright orange when it's working. And let me show you how I tested using my multimeter to confirm that was the fault. Let me show you what I did. I'm gonna, for now, we'll reset in a minute. Let me get my multimeter out. Obviously, as you know, I carry my Regan One Touch with the Fluke leads. They're my favorite leads. Turn it on. All right, I can put that up there just to show you. So, just to confirm, I didn't actually look at the boiler manual for this boiler. It's pretty straightforward, I know what I'm doing. Um, the only reason why I knew what I was testing for is that on the glow plug cable itself, it reads, it says 120 volts DC is what's expected. So on the new one, I can show you. There you go, Ooh, where it focuses, there you go. So you see, 120 volts written there. Um, yeah, 120 volts. So because 120 volts is needed to heat this thing up, the glow plug, I just basically put my multimeter at the cables and checked for what voltage was I getting. That is the PCB actually sending out the correct voltage. So to do that, stick your multimeter probes in there and straight away I'm getting 130 volts. Let me see if I can bring that closer to you guys. There you go, 132 volts, which therefore proves that power is going to the glow plug, but the glow plug is not opening up. And then, just to show you what the glow plug looks like, if you plug it in, I reset. It's going to take a few seconds now, well, about a minute or so, to obviously do its reset cycle. Pump's going to kick in. Okay, there we go. There you go, you see, it's glowing. And obviously I'm not gonna touch that because I'm gonna burn my finger. But your glow plug is now working. So we'll turn it off. And take the old one out, put the new one in. And that's how I diagnose what the fault was. So yeah, that's, so this is how you just replace it. It's just basically held in with an eight mil locking nut. And just take that off. and it slides straight out. So there's the old one. Um, yeah, it's you know, crusty, but that doesn't make a difference. If it worked, it would still glow. Um, so just like I said, that the one that I have in my van, this red silicone bung is not physically attached to the glow plug. Um, and therefore I've tried it once before where I thought I could use what I have in my van in one of these boilers. And I remember it um, was making a gas tight seal and it was spilling gas out of the boiler heat exchanger. So therefore I had to come back with the correct one. So yeah, let's put the right one in. So a new one goes in. And I believe it can only go in one way. Yeah, it can only go in one way. This has got this groove, this slot thing, and that only allows it to face one way. And that goes into there, so he says. That's in and snug and tight, perfect. And now to put this back on. That's that done. And let's fish this through this way. There, moment of truth, turn it on. I've banged on about it before. Um, I love this multimeter. Again, it's just one touch, turn it on. And yeah, it auto selects voltage, resistance, continuity, blah, blah, blah. Um, the leads that I use are the fluke ones because I just like the build quality of them. So yeah, I just thought I'd let you know about that. 
Again, like I've told you before as well, the only thing this multimeter misses is the backlit display. I wish that it had that, otherwise I do love it. And also I've made a little bit of alteration. So I've cut off um, on this rubber housing, this is where your probes could sit. I've cut them off just to make it a bit more slim line so it fits in my bag better. So yeah, probably avoids the warranty, but it's only a bloody cover anyway. Boiler's gonna do its thing. That's all good, all good, there you go. I think it's about to go. And there you go. It's glowing, it's on, flame light on. And uh, temperature's increasing. Jobs are good in. Now I just carry out my safety checks and I'll see you on the next one. Right guys, on the next job for this day, it is a Ramiya Avanta. Um, I'm here to service it and as you can see, pressure's really low. And the tenant has just told me that she's had to reset it and give it an E, it keeps giving an E7 error. I'm not surprised, obviously the pressure is low. So there's the expansion vessel. I'm gonna start by recharging that. Carry out strip service and yeah, I'm not gonna carry on anymore in this video. You know how to service a blooming Ramiya Avanta. Simple as eating pie. And yeah, I'll carry on. There's obviously no light here. I just want to give a shout out again to Unilight for lighting up my day. See you on the next job. Right guys, so here's another job for you all. Um, as you can see, firstly, I'm on a boat. Um, so this is a boat house. Obviously in Amsterdam, as you would know, this is one of the canals and this whole stretch is a home and basically why I'm here is because last week I serviced the boiler um, which is over here as well oh yeah let you all know that this boiler so it's on a, bo on a boat house but it's still supplied is the gas it's still natural gas so it's got a gas meter outside so it's not LPG but yeah um, gas pipe as you can see there with the yellow lever valve there that's fine flow and returns here are fine uh, but you'll notice this is the inlet combination valve on the cold water fitted on the hot water outlet so basically cold water is going in this direction and hot water comes out through this pipe so although the water gets hot what i noticed was that obviously because the way the plate heat exchanger works is that obviously the cold water in is supposed to travel opposite to the flow of the heating circuit um, so that there's a better heat transfer and uh, the customer did notice and he has asked um, how come my water isn't as hot as it should be and I was like that's because obviously to the previous owner I already told him that we need to do this alteration he never got around to doing it and sold the house on but basically this cold water pipe, I'm gonna just like you know, cut it up there, go across and connect it here and then take the hot to the other side. Hot water will obviously be better once this is done. And what I had also noticed, that these radiators don't get hot fully. This one here and this one here. And that's because, let me get down here. As you can see, the flow is on the right and then the return is on the left. However, that's the flow. This pipe gets hotter than this one first. So that's flow and that's return. And then on this side, this one's got the return arrow and this one's got the flow arrow. And however, this one's the return, that's the flow. So because the valves don't work in the right direction, the radiator don't get hot or as quick as hot as they should do. So therefore I'm gonna drain the heating circuit down as well and remove this foot valve, put it on the other radiator and the other radiator put it here. So yeah, that's uh, this job for now. 
So just to prove um, how they get hot, obviously you can do a touch test, but I've gone and invested in the Testo 5115Is, and basically go to the app, which is here, the Testo app, and then you just turn them on. It will flash orange light, and there you go. So straight away you see the phones picked them up. Um, this one is a 917, so 917 there. I'll put that on one of them, like this. And I'm probably teaching you all to suck eggs. But yeah, this one goes here. When I can get my hand open, there you go. Okay, so I wanna now fire the heating up and we'll see the flan returns, how they uh, change in temperature. So I've just turned the heating on and always you know, customers make me coffee and I'm never going to say no to a decent cup of coffee, that's for sure. And I can sit there. Right, so heating has been turned on. So as you can see, one of them has started to increase, which is the number, the bottom one, which is the thermometer 549. And number 549 is this one here. This one's 549. So it's got 549 right on the side there. So 549 is getting hot. And as I said, look at the arrow, so that's on the return. So that's wrong. So I'm gonna swap this foot valve around. And now, on to this side. Uh, this one is 917. I'll put that on this one here. And 549 on this one here. Get my phone. And now let's see what's happening. So again, 549 is getting hotter quicker, which is the left one. But again, the arrow is on the return. So as you can see, this is where the mistakes happened. So I'm gonna change this foot valve, this piece here, and put it on that rad, and that one from there, put it over here. Yeah, that's the job. This is how I proved to the customer that it was wrong because I showed him my phone with the clamps set on, the pipe work, and obviously this makes you know, fault finding easier and explain to customers what's going on a bit easier as well. So I'm draining the system down right now. I've opened up the bleed vents. This rad is empty, that rad is empty. I'm gonna now just you know, undo these connections here and get it going. So yeah, tools for the job, just my bucket spanner and Nipex grips, undo these, And now I'm gonna do this one here as well. So as you can see, this foot valve is completely different to the other one. So it's not gonna be a matter of just swapping the foot valve around. I'm gonna to have to get the union out as well. But that's fine, that's just how the cookie crumbles. So that's it, that's off. So basically, this is fit like this with the flow on the outside. And now I'm gonna be able to put this one like so, and now the flow is on the inside. And then this one will go on the other radiator and it'll sort that one out as well. And as you all know, this is where I keep all my Allen key bits. They're all there. Um, I need a size, a size eight, there you go, size eight. Onto my Weira mini Zyklop. And okay, need a bit more leverage. And 
for a bit more leverage, I'm going to use my Zyklop, the 8000 series or whatever. Okay. Nice, nice. Done. Okay, that's off. PTFE tape that up again. And I'm going to go to the other side and get the other radiator valve off. So, PTFE tape. And just to let you all know, this is uh, approved for gas as well. So that's why I've only get it, given it four turns. What is going on here? The connections feel a bit different. Hmm. No, it's a different thread. Okay, luckily there's plenty of pipe and some slack so I can remove these. I'm gonna go to the van and check what I have. So what's gonna happen is that this fitting, because it's not a standard one that I carry and these connections are like dedicated for this, um, I don't have these in the van. Um, what I do have in the van, however, is a new foot valve. So as you can see, it's the same. Arrows are in the right, in the same direction. So it worked out well. I will put this one. So this was obviously supposed to go on the other radiator, but I'll use this one instead. And I have extra, the correct unions for this foot valve now that doesn't fit to this. So I'll cut these off and just put this on. And that's, there you go, brilliant. And got this calibrator. New nut, new olive, and the new insert. Perfect. And here's the other one. Okay. That goes into there, and this one goes into there, like perfect, like so. And that tight is there. And there we have it. Make sure that... Brilliant. So this pipe was part of this valve on the other radiator, so because it's the same length, the copper pipe is gonna fit perfectly flush again. There we have it. That's that one done. And now back to this side. Okay. That's nice, nice and snug. And so these connections, because like this is the new valve that I got from my van, it's the same as the other one, only the opposite flow and return. But yeah, these one, this one will fit directly onto this connections, like so. And done. There you 
Okay. So that rod's done, that rod's done, and now to go pressurize and put them into action. And obviously I've opened up the bleed vent, so before I start filling this, close that off. Close this one off, done. And now let's fill. So I've pressurized the system, and obviously the system pressure gauge is faulty, but what I did a couple of years ago was I fitted an external gauge, so obviously that needs a bit more pressure. Let's top it up. Let's get it to about 1.4, and that'll be good. We're at one bar. More than sufficient for this boiler to work, but let's just take it to 1.4. Almost there, perfect, 1.4. Let's just isolate down here. Isolate this over here. That's done. And now, to swap this over. So what I want to do, I want to cut this pipe here. Elbow across and do this bit here as well. So let's go outside. Because outside is where the stock tap is. I hope there's no fucking water snake in here or something. Right, that's off. Bathroom. There you go, water's been stopped. Perfect. So yeah, now let's do some pipe work. To do this, I want to cut the pipe. But I can probably just cut it there, to be honest. Cut it there, elbow across there, and then, yeah, let's get this going. So, okay, let's cut this. So, that's cut there, and this one can get cut here. Put that out of the way. Right. Okay, cool. So, because it's MLCP, I can bend it to sort of where I want, like so. That's good. Okay, that's that. Let's open this one up here. Perfect. Okay. That's good. Good old hawk white, boss white, whatever you want to call it, water hawk. Because it's an existing olive that I'm using, just a bit of hawk white will do the job. And that'll do. That would need to go up there. Perfect. And the same for the hot. Done. That'll go on there. Move this hot, like so. Gas is still accessible from behind, so that's fine. And just put a straight, two straight joints, that's that done. Let's go get some copper fittings out the van. 
So a bit of steel wool. Flux. Straight coupler. Onto there, onto there. Grip it with some grips. Yeah, my cutters need a bit of TLC. I haven't used these. This particular one is just like a rough cutter that I just keep my drain down bucket. I need to probably get some WD-40 on that. Again, steel wool. Cleany, cleany. Flux. Like so. Yep, that was in all the way. That goes in there, like so. There you go. My um, ignition on this doesn't work. I want to try to open this up to see if I can fix the ignition. I know on the Rothenberger Superfires you can, but I don't know about this one, so I'm going to try. But anyway, I've got a cigarette lighter. Older. used to do it back in the day obviously when I was a little minor not so bearded doing more installation work but that's light years ago and that's me done great now clean this one and fuck bending I'm so seriously just send that, something like so. Nah, it needs a bend. It does need a bend. <laughs> I thought I could get away with it, but no, it's not gonna look as good. I'm just gonna pop to the van and bend this. And I'll just, but I just went to the van, gave it an offset. Try to keep the work a little bit neat. At least try. Move this cable out the way so I don't singe it. Bit of solder, a flux on these. Connections. Okay, DO, that's great, like so. Let's go and turn the water back on. And let's put this back now. So water's all good, all tested, all live. No leaks, obviously not. And that's that. And yeah, there's the pipe that I've just sorted. Basically, like I said, this is the cold pipe here and it was going into the hot outlet so although the water was still coming hot, it was not as hot as it should be because as you know, a plate heat exchange, so the cold goes cold in this direction and comes out hot and the flow is here and that's the return. So it's more, for, for heat exchanges to work, you need to basically have cross flow. So in opposite directions, so you get better heat exchange, hence why it's called a heat exchanger. Um, and yeah, that's why I've done this. So just a bit of pipe work, that's done. Up here, 
this is all live obviously I've checked that there's no leaks that's working that's working I'm gonna with my pesto um, 115 eyes thermometers I'll just test that one out just to show you that it works and that my work obviously solved the issue there you go 549 is live clamp that on what I believe is the return so now what I'm expecting is number 917 to increase in temperature a lot higher than the sensor 549 all right and as you can see temperature is increasing flow is definitely getting hot now so this was flow don't forget number 917 this probe is flow with the arrow going into the radiator and as you can see that's the one that's increasing now perfect so yeah i'll give it about five minutes and then i'll balance the radiator make sure it's all getting hot just check this one yep this one's also getting hot now perfect yep this one's hot and this is with the arrow in so that's right as well great see you on the next job guys right guys thanks for watching this video i hope you found it interesting um, and see my thought process in action how i do what i do um, and as you know all the tools that i use in my video are on my amazon web shop the link is in the description below if you're stuck with anything you know feel free to drop me a message um, a comment down below will help or you can also you know, contact me via instagram my phone number is also at the end of the video you can always whatsapp me if you need any advice help with you know a job that you may be on or a tool that you're after if i may have used it already i'm always more than happy to give you my input into it and until the next video i wish you all stay well and healthy and live long and prosper and i'll see you in the next one over and out